Yeah, hi, Sama. This is Michael again from the Seven Step System to Pass the TOEFL IBT, and you just tackled the um, integrated writing practice test number eight. And let's see how you did. So your first paragraph, you kind of set up the connection. And in this one, it didn't present information the listening didn't disagree with, but it certainly did add more ideas to what was discussed in the reading passage. So, okay, let's take a look at what you said. So the, the first reason this Civil War, the lecture adds five major reasons. So let's look at what you did in the reading passage. First reason the Civil War, as it is mentioned, is the economic... Um, I would say economic and social differences that happened after the invention of the cotton gin in 1793. Machine made the process more profitable and the machine changed the South into a crop economy de depending on slavery. According to the reading passage, the northern parts were depending. I would say were dependent, not depending. Were dependent upon industry rather than agriculture and depended I would change it to dependent on purchasing raw cotton and changing it into final products. The society in the north followed the antiquated social order which was different from the different culture and classes uh, that were I would say not was abundant in the south. Okay, your, sec your third paragraph, you say the listening pastor provides us with five major reasons that helped the initiation of the Civil War. How about just initiate it, the Civil War? Initiate means to begin. You can use it as a verb. First, states versus federal rights. That's kind of a fragment. I would say the first reason or the first precipitator of the Civil War was the concept of states versus federal rights. The state's rights were ignored and denied in front of the federal rights, which made a general upset among population. But I would say not a general upset, just say which upsetted uh, some of those people in the South, in Southern states. Uh, the government leaders gathered together and denied the state rights, which led the population to move toward the succession and breaking all ties to the government. Now again, you want to focus this information, is the government leaders in the North, they, they decided certain rights and these things infuriated uh, those people who lived in the South. Uh, you're, you say second, fights between slaves and non-slave proponents that occurred after the Mexican War uh, over, new t over whether the new territories would be treated as slaves or, or not caused additional tension, which was a precipitator to the Civil War. So in this case, you don't actually have a main verb here. You have a fragment there. Uh, you say third, Kansas-Nebraska acts increased tension and created two territories to determine free versus slave States. You left out the word states. Uh, fourth, or maybe not. Maybe you're saying you created two territories to determine whether they would be free or slave. Maybe something like that. Fourth, growth of the abolition mo movement. Here's a problem. As you begin these points, you need to relate them back to how their major reasons of the Civil War. So you say the fourth major reason the Civil War was the growth of the abolition movement. And then you begin with your second sentence. Since the northern states were more polarized against slavery and slaveholders, even those slaves located in non-slave areas, again that's a fragment, five, the election of Abraham Lincoln who was anti-slavery who was an anti-slavery person made South Carolina issue as, but even before that, seven states had succeeded from the Union. Okay, so let's talk about this one. Sometimes I read it out loud with you. As I read it out loud, I get more familiar with the grammar 
or the grammar problems that you have. So in this one, you know what? You got the key points from the listening, but you're having some difficulty grammatically uh, explaining those ideas. So let me go back to, let's see what it says under the scores here. I'm looking at the rubric. Let me go back to the end here. See what it says here. Kind of go to... Okay, let me pause it. Okay, now the question is, I think because of your sentence structure problems, I definitely think you're not going to get a, a five here. But let's look at four, see what it says. Response is also scored at this level if it has more frequent or noticeable minor language errors, as long as such usage and grammatical structures do not result in anything more than the occasional lapse of clarity or in connection of ideas. Yeah, I think that you probably have more errors than they allow to get a, a score of four. So I'm looking at three. It says, errors of usage in our grammar may be more frequent and may result in noticeably vague expressions or obscure meaning in conveying ideas and connections. Yes. I think this one, you're probably looking at a 3.5 uh, out of 5. I think when you introduce these different ideas, you say states versus federal rights, that's a fragment. You want to tie that back to as a major reason of the Civil War. So it you, you state the idea, but you don't connect it back to the purpose of the writing. So I think you could better connect some of these points as you introduce them. So I think you need to improve a little bit with your sentence structure, particularly uh, with fragments, avoiding fragments in your writing. Uh, so again, your score here, because of some sentence structure, uh, problems, you're probably looking at about 3.5 out of 5 on this particular writing task. But the good thing is, is you definitely understood what you listened to, you understood what the reading was, and you did accurately connect uh, these ideas together.